Hey guys, Matt from Total MTG here, and welcome to this week's Deck Tech. So what have I got for you this week? I've got another Ixalon update for one of my rotation proof decks that I did a few weeks ago. Today it's the turn of a mono green Stompy. This was a very popular deck and it proved very good in playing as well. It you know, took down a lot of the top decks, even though it was at a bit of a disadvantage, obviously being rotation proof at the time. But now it's not and we're adding some Ixalon cards. So let's first of all have a quick look before we look at the numbers in the deck. Let's have a look at the Ixalon updates in the main board. There is a few in the sideboard that you'll see afterwards as well, but these are the main ones in the main board. So, we are adding some dinos to our mono green stompy deck. Ripjaw Raptor is the first one. Whenever it's dealt damage, you draw a card. I felt like the one thing we were missing in the mono green stompy was drawing cards, and this creature will help us. Along with, as well, Shaper's Sanctuary. Whenever a creature you control becomes a target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, you may draw a card. So we've got two ways now of actually drawing extra cards, which will really help us and make sure that we don't just obviously have jazz hands and no cards left or any creatures or anything left to play. Uh, we dropped a creature for Shaper Sanctuary because I've got rid of the... There was a slight, slight energy sort of element to the deck, but it wasn't really where I wanted to be. It wasn't a dedicated um, energy deck. So these two are the first two added in. Also, Death Gorge Scavenger. It's like the scavenger news for standard. This is what we're adding here. It enters the battle for attacks. You may exile target card from a graveyard. Great against cycling decks. Loads of God Pharaoh's gifts decks out there. Torrential Gear Hulks. This is why this is going to be main board and not side for us because you know it will help us battle a lot of the decks in the meta at the moment. Field of Rune is also there as well, where you get to destroy a target non-basic land. Basically, that's fair when all the flip, you know, um, Search for Ascantra is one of the most popular cards that have come from Ixalon. And this, when it flips, this can destroy it, and it will help us out. We only got it there, I think it is as a one-off, but it's just a little bit of extra help. And of course, we could not not have a Carnage Tyrant in there. Yes, it's going to be massive, it's cost six, and we are a bit more aggro than that, but we're going to have just a one-off in there. It can't be countered. It's going to be great against, obviously, control decks. Trample, Hexproof, 7-6. It's an absolute beast of a dinosaur. And that will make the deck. So, that was the new additions. And now, let's have a look of the actual numbers and what has actually made the deck. There is a few other changes as well. But, you know, if you want to go and see the old deck tech, go and just have a look at that video. But this is the new Ixalan updated Mono Green Stompy deck. Starting off with 4 of Channeler Initiate. 3, 4, 1 and a green. When it ends, you put 3 minus 1 counters on. And then it can tap for any one colour. But obviously we're only green. But it will be good for us maybe to get that early turn, for, uh, you know, a 4 costing creature out earlier. Or something like that. It's going to be there for us. Obviously we're not worried about any other colours. And if it fails B, it can just be a 3, 4. We can put it on something else and just have a 3, 4 body there. It's a nice card. Uh, like I already mentioned, the Death God Scavenger is going to do a, hopefully a lot of work for us in this current meta. We're going to have a full play set of them. We might be able to gain extra um, life. If not, we're going to put a counter on it, make it a 4-3 when it attacks. It's just a very versatile creature. No wonder the price of it is very high at the moment. A full play set of Exemplar of Strength as well. It's a 4-4 potentially for 2 if we put 3 minus 1 counters on something. Maybe we want to put it back on the Channeler, 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 Channeler Initiate once the counter's been removed. So this can come in then as a 4-4 for 2 and then we can maybe tap for mana if we're a bit mana screwed with the Channeler Initiate. 2 Ronus the Indomitable, 5-5 five, five, Death Tut, Indestructible. This is an absolute... When you can turn this on, we've got a lot of creatures that can turn this on with creature power 4 or greater. As you can just see from the screen there, Pran and Serprapar does it. It's a 4-3 for 3. Very, very nice, and the Croc does it as well. Uh, this can also give something else Trample. We can do it multiple times if we want. It's a, you know, it's just a great creature, even if it's not turned on. It can hopefully help us on. But just paying that 3 mana is likely to turn on any creature that we have for this. So Ron is going to attach with its Death Duck Indestructibility. Pran and Serprapar in the main because there's just so much control out there. This can't be countered. It makes our creature spells not be countered. They are always going to have to deal with the Serpa Pard. It's a great card. Very aggro. Crocodile of the Crossing. One of my favourite, favourite cards this is. Has haste. You have to put a minus 1 on counter on target creature in control. We can put that on anything if we don't want to put it on that. And if not, we are then just attacking with a 5-4 haste. Absolutely beast of a croc. And as we go on to the next lot of creatures, we have a hell of a lot of creatures. We are mono green stompy, so that, you know, even if they got a lot of counters, they're gonna have to have to keep 
countering, keep killing. We have a lot of, you know, we're going to come back, you know, with this deck. It's not just going to be, you know, run a few creatures, then we're going to run out. We have, you know, we only run eight other spells. The rest are creatures, obviously, in inlands. But we've got three Ripjaw Raptor. It's a 4-5 for four, 4 with when it's dealt damage, you draw a card. Absolutely cracking card from the new Ixalon. Vajiras Gearhulk is there as a three of as well. Put the counters wherever you want, or we might just want to put it all on the Vajiras, make a big 8-8 eight, eight with Trample. Or, you know, it might be really good to put it on Carnage Tyrant. Put the four counters on that, and then you've got an 11-10 Trample with Hexproof. That, to me, just sounds absolutely epic. So we're going to go on to the spells now. Like I say, just the eight spells. A four Shaper Sanctuary. Help with that card. Draw a lot of spot removal in this format. This could just help us keep drawing cards when they have to kill our creatures. And a Heroic Interventions where all our permanents gain Hexproof and Indestructible End of Turn. Fumigate is obviously still a card. A lot of destruction out there. We can just protect it with Heroic Interventions. We do run a couple of extra um, Blossoming Defense in the sideboard. But this is a four of in the main. And it's quite essential in this current kind of meta. On to the land base now. The land base is pretty simple. We've got a lot of forest there. 17, one field of ruin like I was saying about that card earlier. Four Hashap Oasis. We can sacrifice it. Does it give something plus 3-3? Three, three, but you can only do this as a sorcery. And just to help us against more graveyard decks, we run a one-off scavenger grounds where we can exile all cards from graveyards. Now I do have 23 lands in here, but I'm very tempted. Let me know what you think whether we could put... I think because we're green, we could go 22 drop one of the forest just let me know what you think in there i will be testing this deck out obviously over on twitch this week so make sure you do come over here if you don't know i um, play lots of magic on twitch you know six seven times a week the links are all below make sure you go and follow me down there so let's get on to the cyborg now cyborg has changed around a little bit like i said we've got a few new ixlon cards in here as well arborback stomper wasn't the main it's been moved to the cyborg now very good coming in it, it does cost five but if we can last out against like those speedy red decks, the coming in and gaining five life is, you know, is pretty essential. One Verdant Sun's Avatar, five five does cost seven though. But when it enters the battlefield under your control, you gain life equal to that creature's toughness. So that is extra extra life gain if we want to go long. This will definitely help us out. It's just there as a one off. Bit more protection in Blossom in defense, and we have Dissenter's Deliverance to help destroy those artifacts. And it also has the Cycling for one. Three more Ixacar, Ixacar, Ixacars? Three more Ixalon cards on this page as well. Sorceress Spyglass. I've had this played against me and it's been very good sometimes. So I feel like with Mono Green, we need something maybe a little bit disruptive. So Sorceress Spyglass come in and do a job for us. Crushing Canopy is a new card for us as well. Destroy target creature with flying and enchantment, you know, or enchantment, sorry. I put this in there now because of the instant speed. Getting rid of those glory bringers at instant speed might be very, very handy for us, which means they won't be able to obviously exert, kill our creature. I just feel like it's a good card. Does cost three, it's you know it's quite expensive, but it's got the you know the double thing where enchantment or creature with flying. Grown Rights of Itlimok, I probably butchered that name. It nearly made the main, but I could not fit it in. But that's why I'm gonna put it in the sideboard to see how good it is. I can bring it in. It is a very expensive card. I think it could be very good in this, but for at the moment, it is going to go in the sideboard. Let me know what you think about that as well. Also, a couple of Planeswalkers. Nissa Vital Force. Great against control Planeswalkers. We can bring that in. The minus three where you can return target permanent card from your graveyard is very good. We might be able to get something hasty, you know, bring back a croc or something, go and attack him for the win. It's just a very versatile Planeswalker. Comes in with five loyalty as well, which is very good. Up it to six. And then we, you know, if we want to get that emblem, whenever a land enters, draw a card. We've got a lot more ways in this deck now to draw cards, which I feel like that was the one thing that this deck was missing. And hopefully my brew now has rectified that with hopefully some Ixalong cards. So this has been this week's Deck Tech, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. It's an updated mono green stompy deck. I will be going through some of the other decks. And obviously, as some people put in the chat last week in the comment section, some cards they like me to build around. You can always put that there. And I hopefully will get round to building around them all. But, you know, this is Mono Green Stompy. Please take it. It's a good FNM deck. Take it there and just basically stomp your opponents. Some of the Ixlon cards are, you know, expensive at the moment. Like I said, the Graham Rights and a few other things. But overall, in standard terms, this is a bit, you know, I will say it's not budget deck because it's not like $10 or $20. But it is, compared to this, you know, a lot of decks in standard, this is this is quite cheap. So hopefully it will appeal to you and you will be able to make it and take a few people down with it. 
Anyway guys, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to press that subscribe button, it really does help and it costs nothing, it's free to do. And you can help us get on the way to 3,000 subs and we'll get there eventually and I'll be able to do a nice little giveaway for you all. But you have to be a sub to enter, of course. Like I said as well, if you don't follow me on Twitch, there's links below, go and have a look at that and then you can come and watch me play lots of these decks. And if you subscribe to me on the channel, I might even play your decks as well, that's one thing I do to subscribers who subscribe to me over on Twitch. Anyway guys, you lot take care, and I'll see you on the next video.